Welcome to the Grow Strong Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Meredith Bell, and I interview business leaders who are committed to their own growth and the development of everyone on their team. If you enjoy my podcast, be sure to subscribe and rate it on your favorite podcast platform. Welcome to the Grow Strong Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Meredith Bell. You know, character has always been an essential element for anyone who's in a leadership role. But what exactly is character? And is it a fixed aspect of who you are or can it be developed? Today, you're going to learn the answers to those questions from my very special guest, Denny Coates, who's been my business partner for almost 33 years. He's the CEO of our company, Grow Strong Leaders, and his genius is in writing books and creating content for our products for the purpose of developing strong leaders. Denny has studied character for decades, and he's just published a new book, which I have right here, called Grow Strong Character. It explores this topic of character in depth. And together, he and I developed a new online self-paced program for leaders called GSL Skill Builder that facilitates mastery of both high-impact communication skills and character skills. Denny, welcome back to my show. Thank you, Meredith. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, you're one of my favorite people to talk to in the world. And so I'm always excited when I can bring you to my audience. And especially today, celebrating the publication of this new book, Grow Strong Character. Let's start by having you talk about why you wrote this book. What was the need that you saw? Well, it's about developing character strength. And As it turns out, I've been thinking about this for decades, and it's because, well, I've been involved in leadership for, I was thinking about this, I was going to say 50 years, but actually it's been about 60 years, um, because when I was 15 years old, I was a Boy Scout, and unfortunately, our, our scoutmaster had to leave. He, this was, um, he was a soldier, a really good guy, but he got transferred. And so we had no, we had no scoutmaster. And so I took it upon myself to take his place. So I was the scoutmaster for almost a year before they found a replacement for this guy. It's true that I really have been involved in in a variety of leadership roles practically my whole life. Um, I am a West Point graduate and I served in the military for 20 years. And as you said, you know, you and I have been business partners for decades. So I've got a lot of experience and I've been thinking all that time about how to develop stronger leaders. And our approach has always been to focus on behavior. Now, of course, to be a a, a strong leader, there's a lot you have to know. So there's some stuff, some head stuff. But we've been focused on the doing. What do you do? And it turns out that how you communicate with people is exceedingly important. All you have to do is imagine a manager or a supervisor who is a lousy communicator. That doesn't add up to good leadership. It's practically impossible. And so you need some effective leadership skills. And that's why you and I wrote this book, Connect With Your Team, which you mentioned. Um, But also I came to understand that this a uh, concept of character and character strength was really important to leadership. Once again, imagine someone who is not honest with you or someone who doesn't um, come through on their promises or someone who 
doesn't make as a, a good strong effort and on, on and on. That doesn't add up to strong leadership either. And so character really is a vital component. And I've all the leaders that I've ever been with, uh, their character was an obvious uh, part of the strength of their leadership. So I've been wondering all this time how we can help leaders grow stronger character. And I had actually an, a, an amazing insight along the way. And it's this, that character is not just a thing that, that you can refer to. This, you, know, you, you could say a person has strong character or a person has weak character as if it was something, one thing. And I, dis I discovered that that's, not, that's a misunderstanding. It's not true. It's not one thing. And it's not a trait. It's many things. And all of these things are aspects of behavior or behavior patterns. I realize that if a person, for example, um, uh, I, I think of honesty as a behavior pattern. Telling the truth is a behavior pattern. And let's say, for example, that um, through the course of work, you got involved in, a, in an issue and it didn't work out well. Maybe you, you didn't make a good choice or something. And your boss kind of held you accountable for that. An honest person would own up to it and say, yes, ma'am, uh, that's true. I did that, and I, there, I realize now I could have done a lot better. So you see, it was hard to say that because the risk is uh, admitting your, your, uh, the fact that, that you, you made a mistake that you're capable of making a mistake, admitting that might cause people to see, see you in a negative light, think poorly of you. And so that's the fear. And so it's hard to take that risk, to tell the truth. But a person of strong character will all, almost always tell the truth, will always tell the truth. And it, it's because that's what they do. That's their pattern. And it, at the, at, for, a, for a strong leader, telling the truth is, is not really a choice. It's a, just an automatic, comfortable response. And so it's an aspect. I've come to understand that honesty is an aspect of strong character. And it's part of strong leadership. And over time, I, I came to see that there were dozens of these behavior patterns that were related to character. And so having strong character really is about these uh, many behavior patterns. And so if, you're, if you have strong behaviors and, and if you if these various behavior patterns become an, your automatic comfortable response, you will in fact uh, have or have stronger character. So that was the insight. And it was a very important insight because a behavior pattern is something that you can develop. It's something you can, you can practice. It's kind of like um, any skill. As a matter of fact, that's the reason why in the book, Grow Strong Character, I refer to the behavior patterns as character skills because they influence your character and they are skills. And if you practice them and, and it, with enough repetition, they will gradually uh, grow strong. Uh, in, in your own brain, they will uh, form circuits 
and it, they'll just be triggered by any situation. And you so, know, Denny, as I'm listening to you talk, I'm thinking about how some leaders will say, well, that's just the way I am, right? Or anyone might say, well, that's just the way I am. We, what you're suggesting is that is not the case. It's sort of like um, offering up a reason for why we're the way we are. But we actually have a lot more power than than that. We aren't stuck in an old behavior pattern that doesn't serve us well. If I'm summarizing correctly what you just said, that in fact, we can choose if we see, let's say, an area of character where we could become stronger, we actually can strengthen it over time. Well, what you said initially is true. Um, it's just who I am. I mean, that's true. It's who you are right now. But who you are right now is based on behavior patterns. And those can be made stronger. I'm thinking of a of a a guy that I coached one time um, who is a, a manager and not a very effective one. And I noticed that while I was talking to him, he, he made many phone calls, took many phone calls. What he was doing was keeping track of his subordinates. Um, he honestly had to know on a moment to moment basis exactly what they were doing and how it was going and telling them what to do. He didn't trust them and they knew it. When I talked to his, uh, direct reports, I mean, that was the message. They didn't like it. They didn't like being led that way. The, obviously, their boss didn't trust them. And, and so they didn't give 100%. They were capable of a great deal, but they weren't giving it. Trust is an important aspect of leadership. But could this individual manager learn to trust people? And the answer of, of, is, of course, it would involve an act of trust and see how it goes. And then try that again and again and again and again until it becomes more comfortable to do so. It becomes a pattern. Uh, it, I call them character skills. They are, in fact, uh, very much skills that can be I call them skills because they have to do with action and they're observable. You, you can see people when they're giving trust, you can see people who deliver on their promises. You can see whether or not someone is persevering and so on. And, and so you can give feedback about it. They can try to try it differently. And, and the more they work on it, e the easier it gets. It's like any skill, whether you're a bowler or an athlete, say baseball. And uh, by the way, you know, and that's an interesting example, baseball. I don't know how many of our listeners have ever stood up to the plate and tried to hit a ball that's coming at you at a very high speed. It's not easy. <laughs> Um, in the major leagues, the ball leaves the pitcher's hand and, and is caught by the catcher in less than a second, can, if you can imagine that. And so how do you hit a ball coming at you that fast? By the time you make a decision to swing, it's already past you, <laughs> you know. So you can't, you can't uh, be a batter that way. You can't decide to hit the ball, you have to see the ball leaving the pitcher's hand and begin your swing before it ever arrives uh, at the plate. That's a tough skill. And it, you know what? It takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of coaching to improve that skill. Well, we, we believe 
that uh, these behavior skills can be learned, they can be improved uh, with practice and with coaching. And I think that's, that's why we made it a part of Skill Builder, along with the communication skills, because it's, uh, we designed it to involve uh, peer coaching partners and lots talk of about, practice. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. Why is coaching such an important part of developing a positive behavior pattern over time? Well, coaching is great because coaching uh, remind, helps to remind you of, of what you should be doing, you know, the model, the best way. Um, in our system, the model is the books. Uh, Grow Strong Character is one of the books and Connect With Your Team is the book about effective communication skills. And these are not typical books, you know, 300 pages with lots of stories. These are uh, guides to the proper behavior. They're references. So you can always come back to a, a certain chapter about a certain skill, a certain communication skill or a certain character skill. And it reminds you of what you should be doing. And a coach can help you do that. And a coach can hold you accountable and encourage you going forward to say, well, what are you going to do next? What, what, what opportunities are you looking for this in the coming couple of weeks? And then a couple of weeks later, when you meet with your coach, you, he, will, he or she will hold you accountable for that. How did it go? And uh, just listen to your, you know, your experiences in that. And, you know, it's not easy. And so it helps to have someone who cares about whether you improve and someone who can encourage you and hold you accountable. And that's what a coach does. And that's, what, that's why we love for the participants in the skill builder to have a peer coaching partner. A lot of companies will bring in executive coaches for senior leaders. But one thing you and I have recognized over time is that organizations across the board typically can't bring in a coach for every single leader. It's economically not feasible. So the idea of having people coach each other is a really attractive alternative because not only are they coaching a peer, but those skills they're acquiring as they coach can then be transferred to their own direct report. So they become better at asking questions, at listening, at giving feedback to others as they practice those skills with a peer. With regard to character skills, is that any different in terms of practice on the job than communication skills. Do you see any difference in applying the two of those? Well, they're not the same thing. Um, it takes a lot of different kinds of skill to be successful in your life and in your work. I mean, um, a lot of practical skills are, are, are helpful. Uh, thinking skills are helpful. Uh, communication skills, how you interact with people in, in various relationships, these communication skills, how you listen, how you give feedback, how you accept feedback, how you deal with um, conflict to resolve it, and so on. There's lot there. In fact, there are so many of these communication skills what you and I did, of course, was to focus in on the ones that have the highest impact. So we, in our book, Connect With Your Team, we focus on that, what we call the top 10. So we have a, a, a chapter for, for each of the top 10 skills. And the character skills 
um, while they might impact how you communicate, are really not about communication per se. They're about self-discipline, for example. Um, they're about making an effort or seeking very high levels of excellence uh, or being loyal or having empathy. They're, in fact, they're, the book focuses on 36 skills. And there are probably more than that, but it can be overwhelming. So I decided that we needed to focus in on, on the high impact character skills. So there are 36 in, and I've grouped them into three categories. Uh, one of them being building a strong self. In other words, um, what, which behavior patterns help you get through life, help you be the person you want to be and deal with the, the kinds of problems and challenges that everybody has to face sooner or later. Um, another area is building strong relationships. And those are exceedingly important just for our own happiness, but also for effectiveness at work. Um, for example, uh, I mentioned honesty earlier, integrity, um, compassion, empathy, trust, loyalty. These are behavior patterns, but they're the behavior patterns that, that help you build stronger relationships. And the third category has to do with being strong at work, uh, having a strong work ethic. And we're, I'm talking about uh, taking responsibility, being held accountable. These are hard things. Um, persevering, making, working hard, making an effort. Uh, it reminds me of uh, my favorite basketball team, uh, the Duke Blue Devil men's basketball team, which I follow practically 365 days a year. But the, the coach, the, the legendary coach, Mike Krzyzewski, often said that he wanted to recruit kids with strong character. Now, how do you know if a kid has strong character? <laughs> well, one of the ways is, is if they make an effort as a player. And so it turns out that most of the Duke players are the kind of kids who, who don't just show up for practice. They show up an hour or two earlier and practice on their own. And after practice, they stay late. You see, they make an effort. And so that's a behavior pattern that has to do with being strong at work. So, it turns out that I've been able to relate a dozen behavior patterns to each of these three areas for a total of 36. And the book has one chapter for each of the 36. That's 36 chapters. So that's the guide. That's the guide when working on um, the behavior patterns related to character strength. To me, one of the real strengths of the way the book is structured is that each chapter stands alone. So if somebody's really interested in becoming a person of greater integrity, let's say they have trouble keeping their word to themselves and following through or being on time to others, they can take that chapter and read it because the structure is identical in all of them. You start with the powerful personal story, either that you yourself experienced or someone that you know did. And then you get into the definition of what it is so they understand what does this look like? And then explaining why it's important. And finally, giving very specific examples of exactly what they could do to strengthen it in everyday life. And I think that's one of the things that makes your book on character different from many others that people might read about. And that is, it's it's a concrete practical guide with specific how-to suggestions. So it's not theoretical. 
it's it's very real and very practical. Yes, it's the it's the insight that uh, what we're talking about are behavior patterns. That's the insight, and that they're that you can make them stronger by practicing them. And of course, Skill Builder has the same exact structure that the book does. It it uh, integrates coaching and uh, practice suggestions and so on, learning from experience. And by the way, <clears throat> this is the kind of learning that cannot happen in a classroom. Now, there's a lot of good things that can happen in a classroom with an instructor or a speaker or, or whatever. Uh, there are, in fact, in, in leadership, there are certain concepts that would be very helpful for a, an emerging leader to learn. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about things that have to ha have to be learned outside the class. You cannot get the kind of repetitions that are needed in a classroom. It has to be learned on the job on a daily basis. And so finding opportunities to use a particular character skill and to practice it on the job. We have always uh, recommended that, that you work on one skill at a time, one communication skill. Uh, because if you try to do them all at once, there are people who are very ambitious and self-confident and might do, try to do that. It's not a good idea because uh, you kind of dilute your opportunities. You want to focus what you're doing on one communication skill or one character skill at a time. And that makes it doable. And working with a coach over time and making the effort, um, you can build that pattern. It becomes much more comfortable, much more automatic uh, with repetition, just like hitting a baseball that's coming at you uh, 180 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's important that these two areas of skill, communication and character strength, are combined in this program that, that we call GSL Skill Builder. Because as it turns out, these two areas of, of behavior are probably the core of effective leadership. Mm -hmm. And Talk so a little bit about how they tie in with emotional intelligence. Well, if you've considered emotional intelligence, uh, then you know that that's really what they describe the various aspects of emotional intelligence are really when they're talking about character traits. Of course, we don't see them as traits. We see them as behaviors. You know, like honesty. That For us, that's a behavior pattern. It's not a trait. You're not an honest person if you don't tell the truth in action. <laughs> you know, you could, people could, say you're honest and you could think of yourself as honest, but you really aren't until you do it. So it has, we, we really concentrate on the behavior pattern and making that stronger. And so, yes, the people who are focusing on emer emotional intelligence, also uh, they, they talk about interpersonal skills and all of that's really, that's really correct. That's really good stuff. That's what, we believe it makes for strong leaders and, of course, uh, strong people. Well, thinking about some of the skills that are in your book and in our Skill Builder program, like self-awareness, you know, and self-discipline, this whole aspect of emotional intelligence on managing yourself is tied in directly with so many of these skills and then managing the relationships pulls in a number of character skills as well. In addition to the communication skills, I just see them very much intertwined, interconnected. And that as you increase your abilities 
and your behaviors with each of these skills, overall, your emotional intelligence is going to be strengthened and increased because they're all related. And I think, just as you have said so well, just totally um, critical for being an effective leader, whatever your role might be, that ability to have strong character, display com strong communication skills are essential in, in every aspect of your work. Do you have anything else, Denny, you want to share as we kind of wrap up here, the key points that you've been making, anything else you'd like to add? Well, um, I think I think people who are interested in uh, working on uh, these various communication skills and character skills can find out more. Uh, we have a some information online about it. Um, it's a part of our Grow Strong Leaders website at growstrongleaders.com slash SB. SB, of course, stands for Skill Builder. And it, there's a lot of interesting information there. Uh, if you want to uh, learn more, uh, get into it a little bit. Um, it's... Um, it, it's a, a learning system that supports the long-term effort it takes to work on uh, these various skills. Uh, it, for me, it's a lifelong learning thing. I've been uh, working on various skills. I'm still working on some sp very specific uh, character skills. For example, patience. I've been called out by by uh, my coworkers and other people sometimes about being, I mean, even my spouse, <laughs> about being impatient. And I, I fall down sometimes and learn from it. And I'm focusing on it. And I'm trying to be more patient. I'm consciously, uh, when I'm in a situation where I, I could lose patience, I, I really try to stay calm and be patient because uh, as I've, ex I've as I explain in the book, it's about things you can't control. It's about when is the best time for me to do this, to take this action, because I am, I don't have the, con I can't control it right now. So I could become impatient and try to force it, and that would be bad. Anyway, I'm still learning. Uh, our uh, program involves a one-year subscription. So that's, you know, a whole year of skill building. And uh, the people who subscribe to it, they get the books. They get connect with your team. They get grow strong character. And uh, Peer Coaching Made Simple is a, a third book. So it's all there. And... Um, it's a great way to learn these things. Yes. Well, thank you. And also let's look at encouraging people to pick up your book, Grow Strong Character. If you are interested in increasing your ability to respond effectively to life's challenges, uh, char strong character is, is really essential. And I think that that book can help you. And like Denny said, this is a lifelong process. We have never arrived when it comes to both developing character and our communication skills. We always have new situations that life presents that require us to stretch and grow. And the more we have practiced these skills over time, the easier it will be to engage them when we're in situations that require it. So Denny, thank you so much for writing that book for being my business partner all these years. I continue learning from you and it's wonderful that we are encouragers to each other and coaches to each other as we work on our own areas of skill development. And so I wanna acknowledge you for all the great work you've been doing over the years and I'm so glad to be a part of it with you. Well, thanks Meredith. Um, I've really enjoyed this opportunity to talk about it.
Thanks for tuning in to my podcast. Now head over to growstrongleaders.com and check out our two books, Connect With Your Team and Peer Coaching Made Simple. While you're there, download the free facilitator guide to find out how to implement our unique peer coaching system. Until next time, I'm Meredith Bell.